In this live training, we're going to cover macros and how you might use those in ProPresenter 7 to help support your uh, events, your presentations, and make it easier for you to uh, combine multiple tasks in a single button click or even uh, adding a macro to a specific slide so that as you approach that slide in your service, it will automatically run various elements that you've programmed in. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. So we're here in ProPresenter 7. And I've got my show controls opened up to the macro list, and currently there is no macro listed. Um, a macro is just a combination of various elements that you may use um, at a certain time. So I'm going to create a new macro, and we'll give it a name. This one uh, we'll call Stage Display. Now, just selecting it does nothing because we haven't actually added any particular actions to this stage display. But let's do that now. So let's right click on it. We'll choose Add Action. And let's say that we want to change our stage display um, from uh, whatever it is to the live stage display, which actually happens to be the one that's displayed right now. But when I select this macro, it will ensure that that stage display, which you can see in the lower uh, half of this uh, preview window, is our live stage display. And I'm going to go to our send out and actually select a particular slide and you can see um, our stage display is actually only showing text, but we have other stage displays that might show the graphic. So maybe I want this to, instead of staying stage display by itself, let's call it stage display text. Um, anytime that's selected, stage display will show as this. Now let me duplicate this. This time we're going to rename it to stage display slide. We're going to edit this action, and instead of our stage switching to live, we're going to stay, uh, change our stage display to service host. Now, anytime that this macro is selected, it's actually going to change our stage display to show a full slide instead of just the text related to that slide. And if I hit the stage display text, we're going to go back to that. Now that was pretty cool that I'm able to make the change by just simply selecting a macro, but there's so much more that we can do with that. Let's say I wanted any time this ways to give slide is selected for it to automatically give me the full slide preview. Uh, so I'm going to come back to um, this slide. We're going to say we're on our text, uh, which is just one of our presenters names is listed here. And I want a, a click on this slide to automatically change my stage display. And the way we do that is we will drag this stage display slide and drop it right on top of that slide. You can see in the top left corner, we got a little M for macro. And as I select that slide, you'll notice our preview automatically shows that we went back to the slide preview instead of the text preview. Now I could also put this stage display text macro over top of the previous slide. And when I select on that one, it goes back to the text again. So um, the macro automatically applies the changes that we've made to that macro. Now there's a lot that we can also add into these macros. So one action is interesting, but we could add multiple actions. So we could also say add action, um, let's just say a message, for example, and we're gonna put a minute 30 timer on the screen. We'll go ahead and leave the defaults. So now, since stage display slide has been already added to this slide, when this is selected, it's going to automatically turn on our message. So I'll select it now, and you can see it has started that message. Pretty cool. Um, that's an automatic because it has been added to this macro. Also, when we look at this macro, you've got the icons that indicate what sort of events can happen when this particular slide is selected. Let's take a look at all the different events that could happen um, in relation to this. I'm going to slide this up to make sure you can see it all. If we choose Add Action, we have an option to add a clear. We could clear like a, a message. We could clear an entire group, um, things like that. We can change an audience look which um, we'll get into more details about how an audience look may be used in a different training. But just know that if you had different audience looks, you could apply those audience looks to a macro and they would automatically take effect as you select that macro. 
We've already seen what the stage actions are. You can change a slide destination. Um, a slide destination will allow for you to either um, choose to display a slide up front on the main screens or not show it on the front. Um, or if you have different slide looks, you can have it go to uh, different screens. The slide destination is a very specific one uh, that we might use in some cases when we're doing a reflection song, uh, for example. And we want the, um, the worship team to be able to see the stage display with lyrics on the back, but the people in the room are only going to see just a motion background or, or something um, that's, that's just empty in the front uh, because we want them to reflect. Anyway, the slide destination can be used for that. We can trigger a timer. Uh, so as a particular macro is selected, a timer could start, a timer could stop. We could also reset a timer. All of that happens within the timer section. We can turn on props. We don't use props much at Mercy Hill, but if you wanted to, you could do that. Um, let's say, for example, I had a prop that just put a little live logo in the top corner of a screen just to say that we've started a live stream. We might want that to happen as soon as a particular slide is selected in an event. Um, so you click that, the live prop goes up, and we might add another macro to another slide that says take the prop down. Um, these are things that we can add in there. We've already talked about how to add a message to a macro. Um, you can start different playlists, whether it's a video or audio playlist. Um, we can also trigger another device within the room. So in this case, communication can talk with other MIDI devices um, to trigger something. For example, we might be able to trigger uh, a scene on our soundboard as a result of selecting a slide on the screen. Um, we may also be able to trigger uh, something related to our video switcher by selecting a slide or a macro here on um, ProPresenter. We can get into more of that in an advanced uh, class later. Um, you can trigger audio inputs. You can also trigger other macros by selecting one macro. You can stack them on top of each other. And so you can see all these different elements are actually the same that I can add directly to a slide. So I could have actually accomplished the same result of changing the stage display or turning on a message by just adding these elements to a slide. But the advantage of being able to stack multiple items in a macro and put them all on a slide saves you numerous clicks um, to, to be able to accomplish the same task. So just know that macros can be used in that way. You can also change the look of the macro. So we can change its color. And let's say I wanted to use something that's a brighter color like this pink. And since that was applied to this previous slide, you can now see that the color of that macro indicates a different M on that particular slide. And so that's important to know. Um, you might be able to just quickly scan through all of your presentations and look for those little M's um, in different colors on the top corner of a slide. Um, that might help you as well. You can also do various triggers uh, for a particular macro. So when the computer starts, a particular macro or when you pr open the program, one particular macro may just automatically run on startup as you can see here. And that might be something that you would use to, like if you had a complicated screen set up or um, various scenes on a soundboard or a lighting console that you wanted to send a trigger to as soon as ProPresenter opens, um, this would be a way that you could accomplish that as well. Um, at some of our campuses, you'll find that we have numerous macros because there are so many elements to a service that we use uh, that might be important to have all these different triggers lined up. For example, at Regional, uh, we use a half screen option where it actually moves the presenter over to one side of the screen and then it fills the other side of the screen with uh, the presentation that we've given out a ProPresenter, like a, a large slide, a graphic of some sort. So we may use the macros to trigger an element on our video switcher that moves all those pieces around, puts them in the right place, and then on a related slide after that one, we might trigger another macro to send it all back to a regular formatting. It's really cool what you can do with macros. They give you lots of ability to customize what's in ProPresenter and the way that you interact with ProPresenter. But the big thing is it saves you a lot of clicks and also a lot of thinking through the different elements that are required to, um, to make a, an advanced move like, say, switching the video switcher to show an image to the side. 
that is actually like five different steps to do the one little thing. And by uh, having macros in ProPresenter, we can knock out all those steps with one single click or even dragging that macro onto a slide and the slide just automatically does the job for us. So hopefully that covers what you need on macros. We may get into more details about them, but I wanted to give you an overview of what a macro was. So that as we talk about those through uh, future trainings in ProPresenter, you're at least familiar with what they do. Thank you.